Okay, are we getting getting down that way? Um, who would like to share one of their top tens? Yes, sir. Build positive relationship with all stakeholders. That's it. If we can do that, we're we're halfway there. Thank you. Anyone else? So there's that transparency. Yeah. Um, create opportunities for voices to be heard. Create opportunities for voices to be heard. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What's your? Yeah, you're just talking about um, all voices. Not, I mean, we've done some things this year to bring together our parents and teachers and students and um, some and it's training and revisiting how we even did our parent nights at the beginning of the year and um, trying to make sure there's a unified message that's getting across about who we are as a school um, in, in really like a, a, a training format for our parents so it's yeah. like them kind of understand more of why we do what we do. That's good because, you know, that's a real popular term now, have a voice, you know, give voice to. And uh, it takes on more and more meaning, especially when you look at certain minority groups or gender issues where the voice was not there. And now... Uh, we also created a parent collaborative network, like, um, what does everybody else call it? We have to call it something different. Um, <laughs> Anyway, it's a group of parents who meet once a month and bring issues to the table, basically like a, like a school improvement team, but from a parent's perspective. A booster club. Yeah. Mm, not really, no. Well, <laughs> why, <laughs> why, why do you think uh, I developed my top ten here? What would be the maybe an underlying motivation here to do this? It, it keeps it, yeah it, it, it keeps me straight you know I because when you look at uh, number two the climate and the culture of your school is mainly determined by you so when things are not going well you know Covey says if you think the problems out there that's the problem be able to be self-reflective and turn things around is the first step. And when I was talking about the school and getting it turned around, it wasn't until I looked myself in the mirror and said, what are you doing to create this issue? That was new thinking for me, you know, back, back in the day. And learning to take responsibility for my own behavior and modeling that and not being afraid to say, oh, you know, I've really, I really made a mistake on that. Sorry. Uh, thanks for bringing that out. Encouraging your staff by saying to them, you know, I really respect you for giving your honest opinion to me and that you trust me enough to tell me, the, tell me what's really on your mind that I'm not going to overreact, I'm going to be appreciative. Did you have something? Yeah, well, but speaking of, of trust, I think by you publishing what's important to you, so people who are in your organization see it. Yes. And then they match what you say you're going to do to your action. That's, that's the definition of building trust, right? If you say these <clears> things are important to me, these are the most important things to me about the job, that I have the role I have in this school, and then you back that up with your actions, and people see that. That's building the trust in school culture that, that you don't forget. Thank you. I hadn't really, it really, I really hadn't thought of it that way, and that's exactly what it should be because hold me accountable. Here's what I believe. 
I, I really am sincere about this, and I'm willing to, to put this out there. So that's something to think about for yourselves as you develop. Okay, I'm going to move on here. I wanted to now look at our John Maxwell book, and everyone communicates if you connect. I was going to take care of just two chapters, and that was chapter 2 and 9, and kind of look at some of the uh, quotes in here and see how they line up with my top 10. Because when you start getting a preponderance of data or information being repeated by this author in this situation, it really starts to tell you, you know, this, this is valuable because it's being talked about in, in a wide variety of books and articles and genre. Okay, so John Maxwell's book, Everyone Communicates Few Connect. Number six is my be Become a Servant Leader. Maxwell says, you must have a servant's heart. Be prepared to serve those who come in contact with you. That's in chapter two. My number four, demonstrate love, kindness, and respect for all. Maxwell's is, people want to know, do you care for me? If I am living number four, which is demonstrate love, kindness, and respect for all, then I can answer with a resounding yes. I want to read with you another artifact that I received, which is a treasure to me. This came to me at my retirement from a former student of mine who, my first year there, he was a fifth grader. Mr. Dingwall, I remember <clears throat> when I was attending Coddington, and it was your first year there. And I found out you were a pilot. I remember the meeting we had in your office. Later that year, about a aviation. Then, every time I saw you in the halls, <clears throat> I would stop you and we would talk all about aviation. Our friendship has grown stronger since then. I believe without your support and love, I would not have the motivation to get from where I was to where I am going. I promise to stay in touch when I'm in college and when I continue into the U.S. Air Force. Thank you for all your love and support. I hope you enjoy your retirement. That is a keeper. Uh, he didn't go in the Air Force. I just had lunch with him this summer. He's being, he was being fought over by the Washington, D.C. Federal Police and the Secret Service agents. And now he's the Secret Service agent. <coughs> Neatest little guy. Wonderful person. That's what it's all about. So, that was my example for number four. Demonstrate love and kindness and respect for all. Maxwell says, people want to know, do you care for me? If I am living, number four, I answer with a resounding yes. I think I said that. Number nine, which on the list is build relationships by listening. Maxwell advice is to ask often, how can I help you? This is how I know what people need, want, and value. In chapter 9, Maxwell says that people need to know that you understand them and are focused on them. So let's talk a little bit. What do you know is empathic listening? Can we have someone give me their definition of what empathic listening means? Listen to understand, and how how does that look? Um, maybe asking more questions as you're listening. 
So listening, hearing what they have to say, and then following through by asking for a little bit more. So Refle reflecting back, I, th yeah. I heard you say that you're, you're really uh, concerned about this matter. So, so you're, you're connecting and you're encouraging. What else? You have to be present. Oh, how many times when I was a principal? Oh, yeah. Let's hurry. Okay. Well, I, I got to go. Thanks. And, you know, you can be efficient with things, but not people. You have to stay and you have to connect. And every minute that you do that and you take that time you don't have and you get out into that situation and you sit there and say, well, that's really, I'm really sorry to hear that this is, you're going through this. How may I help you? And listen to them. <clears throat> I'm going to open it up for questions after I uh, go, th go through a couple more here. Number six, become a servant leader. Maxwell says, you must have a servant's heart. Be prepared to serve those who come in contact with you. One of my favorite uh, people is Colin Powell, and he he's got a lot of a lot of wisdom. So I got a couple quotes from Colin Powell, General. Leadership is all about people. It's not about organization, plans, or strategies. It's all about people to get the job done. You have to be people-centered. And the other one he says, and we're going to substitute the word soldiers to teachers, the day teachers stop bringing me their problems is the day you have stopped leading them. They have either lost confidence that you can help them or concluded that you don't care. Either case is a failure in leadership. So, develop your top ten, be transparent, get your listening skills in a stronger place. The empathic listening is, is that you're listening with your heart as much as with your eyes and your ears. Your eyes and your heart and your ears are all engaged into what the person is really saying. Um, wonderful books out on listening. This book here I think you'll really enjoy and hope you will take the time to join us when we do it and Tom will tell you more about it. This uh, is time for a few questions. Anybody like to make a comment or a question? Yes, Dr. Miller. Where were you in your career when it, when it switched for you? What was the, I mean you talked about the Okay, I'll tell you a story. When I was at this school, this Hillcrest School, uh, we were coming along, and I had a first grade teacher who left for pregnancy leave. She had her baby. Everything was great. Her husband went to see her. On the way home, he got killed. So we got through that. I think it really started bringing our staff more together. But she, she, you know, she came back and she was back and she was teaching and, and there I am, the, you know, the watch everything, make sure everything's right. I was noticing her room wasn't looking so good, you know. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go down there and tell her. She's got to keep her room a little bit more neat. Hard to believe. I would even be thinking that way, but. So I go down to her room. And she's sitting at her desk. And she couldn't, she, you know, she was just almost not there. So I talked with her and gave her a hug. And that, that was a turning point for me. Yeah. And I learned how to listen and care at a much deeper level. Any other questions? 
Thanks. You never know when it's going to happen. How can you not love him, right? It's impossible.